want to turn to the courage that you constantly and consistently exhibit and the leadership. You continue to come out holding people's uh, feet to the fire uh, and making sure that the audiences and, and the communities understand where the truth lies. And you get attacked for it over and over again from your neighbor to the crowds in Washington that you and your wife had to deal with to now a suspicious, a suspicious package that arrived at your home in Kentucky. I want to bring in your wife. Kelly Paul is with us as well this morning. Senator Paul and Kelly Paul, we appreciate you joining us to talk about what has become incredibly personal to you both. Uh, you saw a package, you received a package at your home containing white powder that was later deemed harmless, but there was a photo of a bruised and bandaged picture of you, Senator, with a gun to your head threatening violence. Kelly, let me bring you in before I get the senator's comment here. How did you feel when you get this, got this package? Can you tell us what happened? Hi, Maria. Um, well, I, I, I was scared, obviously. Uh, it's a terrible feeling. Your heart just sort of drops. It was a sunny Monday afternoon, and I walked to my mailbox, and I had a quite big stack of mail, and I was standing in my front yard. So thank goodness I really wasn't in the house. I never brought the letter into the house. I was standing sort of right up to my front steps and I started shuffling through the mail and I looked down and I see this horrible image of a wounded Rand, a doctored image with a gun against his head. And I look down and it says, you know, I'm going to finish what the other guy started, you mf'er. And I just, you know, froze and was disgusted. And so I went to sort of throw the letter down. I didn't open it. But as I did, I could feel something that sounded like sand, like a weighty substance. I could feel it moving in the letter. So I ran inside. I washed my hands. Of course, I was terrified. You know, you think of anthrax. You think of the, you know, the poisonings that happened years ago when people sent poisons in the mail, ricin or anthrax. Immediately called Rand, uh, the FBI, the sheriffs, and, you know, everyone's telling me, you know, take off all your clothes because I had been holding the mail up against my chest, get in the shower. So I had, you know, several hours before I found out that it was non-toxic, thinking that I might have been poisoned. You know, I had someone from the FBI saying, you know, are you having any shortness of breath? And, you know, these, these, there are lethal poisons. It was very thin paper. So I'm thinking, have I absorbed something through my hands? Uh, it was, it was really, a, it was a terrifying day and it's pure terrorism. People are just trying to terrorize us into silence, you know, for being a public servant. Yeah, that's right. And, 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 Senator, it's not the first time you got beaten up by your next door neighbor at one point, and then you both were crowded and, 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 well, and uh, smushed would, together by crowds uh, after the Republican National Convention uh, when you had Maria, demonstrators it's, surrounding it's and chasing. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important. There wasn't an altercation or a fight with the person that assaulted me. I was hit from behind by somebody running full blast down a hill never was aware of who hit me or what hit me, had six ribs broken, my lung damaged, and part of my lung removed. But here's the point. We have people on the left who think it's just hilarious. Stephen Colbert thinks it's great to make fun of the injuries I had. I had six broken ribs, a damaged lung, part of my lung removed. And so when Colbert and all these other people think they're so funny and they get everybody in the Internet all ginned up, guess what? They encourage crazy people across the country. CNN puts my house on Google Map, on, the, on television, tells everybody where I live. So this has got to stop. But the left thinks it's just hilarious what happened to me, and they encourage other people to do it. That's the whole meme on the Internet. All these people just think it's hilarious. Come and finish the job. Oh, that's really funny. I almost died, and they think it's really funny, and they want to do it again. Twitter doesn't do a damn thing. I finally talked to them, and they took this one down. But was the guy punished? No, the guy that keeps saying this, we got the, the, the white powder the day after some has-been uh, songwriter, you know, encouraged people to come over and finish the job and says he's going to buy drinks for anybody that will come and assault me again. There was no fight. I was hit from behind from a man running full speed. If you've seen the images of that Vietnamese guy that was killed, the elderly man that was killed, the reason I wasn't killed is because I was younger and I was on grass, not concrete. 
but the guy was running full speed and hit me from behind. It was not a fight. And it's important that people understand how terrible this was and how terrible the injuries were because the left just keeps going on and on like, oh, this is so funny. Uh, somebody on MSNBC right. said it's the funniest thing she heard of the whole year. And Maria, yeah, Terrible. exactly. I, just, and, I, don't, yeah, I know reporter. it wasn't a fight. I know that. Yeah. Maria. Go ahead, Kelly. I just also yeah. wanted to say media has, has misrepresented this from the beginning. Before that man assaulted Rand, he had disgusting things on his Facebook, graphic, horrible things that he wanted to do to President Trump. He was a politically motivated person. He admitted to the police and to the courts that he had never spoken to Rand in over 10 years, never complained to us about anything. His lawyer then tells the media, oh, it was a yard altercation. And the media took his lawyer's words to, the, to them as fact, completely ignoring the fact that this man was a vocal internet hater of Trump, of the GOP, and uh, had never spoken to us. And we'd had no problems with this person. Yeah in, you know, 20 years of living, uh, you know, three acres away from him. Yeah, but, I mean, there's nothing's being done, Senator Paul. I mean, that, that you know, what's, what's being done for you and your family? I mean, here we have Nancy Pelosi talking about the barbed wire around the Capitol, about a commission. No one's focused on what actually happened to you, that you broke. You had six ribs broken. It's absolutely outrageous. Yeah. Not, not one Democrat came up to me since I've been back and said, I'm sorry that you're having to deal with having white powder set in an envelope to you. Not one. Not one of them, I don't think, ever uh, said they were sorry for me being assaulted by someone and having six ribs broken and yeah. nearly dying and having my lung removed. Not one of them. So people say, oh, it's all Trump's fault. Well, guess what? The left shot at me at the ballpark. The left attacked me in my house. A mob attacked me in D.C. Something's got to give, and the left needs to quit fomenting this, and the comedians need to say, this isn't funny, this is serious. Yep. Uh, exactly. And uh, n no comments about uh, the commentary on the left uh, about riling people up. Senator Rand Paul, thanks for your leadership. And Kelly, thank you as well. We're sorry that you've been dealing with this.